time was CES 2020. I know, the last trade show we were all able to do. The team and I took our time to pick a good list of winners as our favorites for the show, but there was one product that stood out as my personal favorite, and for the oddest of reasons, one that I really wanted to try and use as quickly as I left the Vegas show floor. Obviously, at the time, I had no idea that our new normal was going to shift to working from home. The minute that I was able to come back to the studio, LG was nice enough to send one over, and then left me with a problem that I'm gonna explain in a bit. First, the product. This is the 32-inch LG Ultrafine Display Ergo, winner of more awards than the average monitor, and all mainly because of the tricks that honor the name that spoiled me so much for the last couple of weeks that I've decided to go fully Ergo. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive into what that means. Okay, let me explain. For most of you, working from home is the new normal, but for me, that's been my reality for the past 10 years. And once you get to my age, you get to realize that the right tools make a dramatic difference in your productivity, particularly at a time when you're not being supervised permanently. So yes, the right computer and the right camera are important to get my work done, but they're just part of the story, the peripherals I use to interact with them, and even the bags and accessories I use to carry them make a huge difference in my ability to deliver. So back to the problem. I get the monitor, I start testing it, and then I realize that if I could apply that same mentality to the rest of my setup, I could extend the functionality of the same workspace to serve multiple purposes. The basic principle is reducing clutter through adaptation. I make videos, and most of the time I use the same desk for filming that I use for editing. The coolest thing about this monitor is that instead of taking over my entire desk all of the time, I can simply move it around in whatever position is convenient to me. To achieve this, a lot of the story is actually the unboxing experience. At the top of the box, you'll be greeted by the stand that enables the operation of the monitor, which is actually the why the box is so heavy. I do recommend that your desk is strong and wide enough to have a lot of weight applied to one of the sides. And then beside it, you have all of the cables you need, from charging to HDMI to USB-C. All you have to do is screw the C-clamp in place, and in typical LG fashion, just snap the monitor on its mount, though I do recommend a little help for you to not fumble with the placement. The stand then allows you the flexibility to swivel it 280 degrees, tilt it 25 degrees, pivot it 90 degrees, lift it and extend it or retract it, you name it. And to be able to do this without obstruction, it provides a cable management system that uses the arm to tuck away the cables. And these come with special loops to help the monitor keep as much slack as it needs to move around. As for the panel, I have drifted almost exclusively to LG monitors, mainly because Apple sort of did it first. I need color accuracy. Apple's panels are known to be color accurate, and LG has been providing their IPS LCDs for years for that particular reason. This is a 31.5 inch 4K IPS display at a typical 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's got anti-glare coating, supports DCI-P3, and also HDR10. That said, this is not really a gaming monitor at just 60 hertz refresh rate, but there is a gaming mode and also AMD FreeSync in addition to even picture-in-picture -picture mode. Its brightness can go up to 350 nits, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but is perfectly fine indoors. As for connectivity, this is a USB-C monitor, which provides up to 60 watt power delivery and then can turn the rest of the ports into a hub. These include two HDMI ports, two USB ports, and even headphone out. And then maybe you already noticed that I'm using that audio out to connect to an LG Xboom Go PK7 on the right, and it's mainly because I have a feeling you'll need it. My least favorite feature of this monitor is the built-in speakers that sound pretty flat. The PK7 provides so much more depth, is Bluetooth and IPX5 rated, in case you want to take it out to the beach later because it does offer 22 hours of battery life, and yeah, you can switch the lights off if that's not your thing. But then back to the initial premise, this whole setup has me really spoiled. At nearly 32 inches diagonal, it's really hard to go back from this to a laptop display. 
LG knows how to make accurate color, I'm not bothered by any sort of reflection, and I've got enough canvas to multitask and edit my videos. It's not necessarily my favorite size though, I feel the sweet spot for 4K is 27 inches, but the size does provide a more in-your-face approach to content that I prefer for video editing. I seriously just bring my M1 MacBook Pro, place it below the monitor at the far end and forget the laptop exists. Oh, and that neat little hub below it is the Line Dock 13 inch, by the way. I'm sure by now you know that the M1 sucks in the amount of ports it offers. The Line Dock gives you two extra USB C ports, HDMI, a mini display port, three USB A's, an SD card slot, built in SSD storage, and even offers battery power as well in case you're also in need of that. But then I didn't stop there. This whole concept of having a product that's available to me when I need it and that I can push away when I don't made me start looking into other products that could adapt and follow that same principle. I ordered Xiaomi's Mi LED desk lamp. Yes, Xiaomi makes more than just phones. Aside from it being elegant and minimalistic, I can tuck it away when I don't need it. I also ordered a cheap 3-in-1 webcam mount from Amazon and used one of the arms to hold my Logitech Brio, which I still find to be my favorite webcam because of its 4K capabilities. And also, my microphone of choice is the new Shure MV7. I love the fact that this new podcasting microphone now works through USB and allows me to work from a bit of a distance as well. As for my peripherals of choice, I'm mostly a Mac user because of Final Cut Pro, and I feel that the only company other than Apple that gets these right is Logitech. I'd pick the MX Keys over Apple's Magic Keyboard any day. It's a full keyboard for less money, the buttons are more ergonomic, you have all of the Apple shortcut keys at the top, it is backlit, and you can quickly switch between your iPad, Mac, or iPhone with just the press of a button. And then the gold standard, the MX Master 3 for Mac, is also the way to go. I mean, not even Apple's Magic Mouse helps you call on Apple's own commands. It's also far more ergonomic, and then also lets you switch between three Apple products with just the button. Really, the only thing that I can't switch away from is Apple's Magic Trackpad. I don't think any company does these better for how much I need them while editing a video. The only other products that I had for about a year are the desk and the chair, after a couple of my friends sold me on the benefits of getting a standing desk, which I do not regret one bit. You've actually seen this Autonomous Smart Desk 2 in most of my videos. I'm kind of regretting the bamboo top for low light. I wish they had more of like a gray vintage option, but it does get the job done. I actually spend most of my time standing and I do recommend the approach. When I sit, it's on their Ergo Chair 2, which is seriously worth every penny if you want to do away with those back problems after hours of sitting down. To conclude, yes. All this started with a monitor, or should I say an ideal that the product that takes up the most amount of space in your desk can then be moved around or moved away when you don't need it. After being locked in for months, I'm not gonna lie, I don't regret all of this one bit. We should all be able to modulate our workspace for different scenarios, but again, for this, you really do need the right tools. This LG 32-inch Ultrafine Ergo started the year being one of my favorite products, and after using it for a couple of weeks, I would say that it retains its title. I have no problem in recommending it, and let's hope you don't go on a shopping spree like I did, just to be able to match the functionality. I'll be sure to link to all the products mentioned in the description in case you're interested, and be sure to tell us more about your setup working from home in the comments. While you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow me on my personal handles to see me have no restraints and going all out. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.